What's up guys, it's you and welcome, uh, whoa, mouse on the screen. Anyway, what's up guys, it's you and welcome back to, uh, another LBA battle. Um, like I mentioned in the last video, gotta get caught up on these. Uh, fell a little bit behind just because with vacation and all that stuff. Um, but I'm gonna try to get caught back up because this week is a bye week. I'm gonna try to get you guys, uh, two of these. One on, you, the last one went up on Tuesday, hopefully. This one should go up on Thursday, then they'll there will be two this weekend so that'll get us back on track that'll be amazing anyway i'm playing merc um who is actually mr Mercro on youtube uh produces some pretty cool content link to his channel will be down in the in the description and speaking of channels being down in the description um shout out to my boy d train for recording this for me uh he also does lba stuff so if you like this content i uh like this format i guess i encourage you guys to go check him out anyway with that out of the way we're going to look at teams. Um, his team is actually very, very threatening to mine because he does have a pretty solid defensive core chilling here in uh, Chestnut and Quagsire. Also, this was an Aqua Magma crossover match, which explains both Thunderses. But anyway, um, looking at his team on the near side, he has Mega Gardevoir, uh, Titar, he has a uh, Scizor, which is actually kind of threatening to my team now that I think about it. Um, Drill is really my only dual stab resist, and it gets knocked down by a superpower. Knocked down, that was kind of weird phrasing, knocked out. He also has a Thunderous of his own. He has a Chestnut, and he has Quagsire. And looking at my team, I have a Choice Scarf Excadrill, as per the usual, but this week I decided to go ahead and bring Sand Force, just because I knew he would have Tar, and uh, he kind of needs the Spadef uh, on Tar in order to take on stuff like Gothitelle and take on stuff like Thundee. So, um, I also brought, of course, Thunders, the mascot. He's got to be here because he's amazing and stuff. Um, I also brought SD Pass Lucha, I think. It was either SD Pass or regular Sweeping Lucha. I'm not sure. But, um, in addition, I brought Gyarados, which was sub-DD in order to set up on Scald Quagsire because I thought he would bring something like Skull Toxic Recover, um, Skull Toxic Recover, and maybe Earthquake or something like that, and then I brought Gothitelle, um, who actually needed to do a lot of work for me this week, and, uh, basically my win condition was Gothitelle, in a sense, because I could do one of two things, the first of which is trap Quagsire and let Halucha run over his team, uh, second of which is, a uh, trap just not and uh, let Gyarados run over his team because Gyarados does actually beat Quagsire 1v1 if it is sub because uh, Mold Breaker negates unaware and I also have Clefable which I believe is just Rock's Clef this week but either way we're gonna go ahead and get into it because um, this was a pretty interesting battle to say the least and uh, really attests I think to uh, both both players' uh, skill levels to some degree. Anyway, um, he's going to go ahead and lead Savage to the Mega Gardevoir. I lead Clefable, and immediately I see I've, I have absolutely nothing for this. Um, if I had T-Wave, I, I would have gone for it right here. That may have been a better play in hindsight, but I did kind of need the moves that I had. I believe I had Grass Knot this week as well in order to uh, mess with Quag on the Switch. I just decided to get up Stealth Rocks, and maybe he'll go for a Psy Shock right here over predicting or maybe he'll go for a focus blast trying to catch drill on the switch and i can get a little bit of extra damage but that is not the case he just goes ahead and knocks me out with the hyper voice so with that i'm gonna go out into uh, my excavator right here because i know i can threaten him out and i just want to kind of i'm actually gonna make a double right here and i got the tail um because i do think he is gonna go out into either one of his walls right here i would have really really liked him to go out into a uh, quag right here because what you guys are gonna see he's gonna switch out he has shed shell and he's gonna go into t-tar and once i saw this i was like this is gonna be a wild ride because now i have to get like flinches along the line with gyarados or um like flinches with waterfall or flinches with iron head somewhere along the line and i know that he's going to pursue me but i'm choiced in a psychic i can't really do anything about it so that's unfortunate but uh now i get to go into a uh, extra drill right here and fire off pretty much whatever move that i want and uh, do some nice damage and you guys are going to see that this iron head actually here is not going to be actually here for long if it continues to stay in on drill i could have stayed in and tried to go for a flinch I really contemplated that play super hard, especially since he did go for the Leech Seed, but ended up switching out into Halucha either way. Um, had I gotten the flinch there, I could have won the game, um, just straight up, because um, Excadrill and Sand is a savage, so 
That's generally how that goes. Um, but he is going to uh, get some health back. And I'm going to make an another double right here because I really don't think he's going to stay in as he decides to switch out into Bele, the uh, Quagsire. Um, I almost... Okay, so let me just explain something right here as the sandstorm subsides. Just going to pause it real quick um, because I need to uh, tell you guys something. So... Um, with Gothitelle, I had Energy Ball um, as like my coverage move, along with Trick, Psy Shock, and or Psychic, and I think Thunder Wave maybe um, to like potentially Parasizor. I know that's really horrible, but did it anyway. Um, so my mindset was, hey, I can just run different coverage on Thundy. I don't have to run Energy Ball. Um, in order to just smack Quag, so it's okay, like, that's not an issue, so that's why you guys aren't gonna see the Focus Blast right here, um, or you guys aren't gonna see the Energy Ball, rather, you will see the Focus Blast, um, that's what I go for, unfortunately for me, um, th my Thunderous is blind, um, that, that, that's the short story, uh, he, I'm actually gonna reveal the Incinerate right here, which is a cool move Thunder gets this gen, um, that basically uh, makes sure you don't have to run HP fire or anything like that. But he goes out in a tar right here, and uh, I kind of know something's fishy, and I don't really want to put my chances on a focus blast. He actually told me after the battle he was Chopple Tar, so even if I had gone for the focus blast, that would have been bad. Um, that was okay. Sorry about that. I'll just cut that part out. Something popped up on the screen. Anyhow, I have drill out right now, and uh, what I should have done right here is go for the EQ because would have done a lot to chestnut either way but um just went for the iron head did absolutely zero damage to quagsire and uh gonna have to switch out right here i end up going into nimbus uh because i can take this thing on he scalds and uh unfortunately enough for me i do get the burn um not that it like matters a lot because uh i'm a special attacker this game I'm, i ran special but it's just a little like eh i guess <laughs> Because uh, he's going to go out into Judge right here. And this is where having that extra 24% really would have helped. Uh, because I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt. And he is not going to quite die. He's going to get buffeted by the Sandstorm. I'm going to get buffeted by the Sandstorm. I thought, you know, maybe he just won a speed tie. But, you know, if I had 24% extra HP, um, I could have lived this Scarf HP Ice. Um, which he does actually have. Which is a little unfortunate for me. But it's okay. Sandstorm subsides. And I get to go into Excadrill relatively for free. Um, he's just going to stay in an HP Ice. Because you know it was his best play. As I'm going to go for the Iron Head. And uh, that gives him get, that gives him rather a uh, pretty free switch into uh, Quagsire right here. Which will four times resist this hit. No just not four. Two. Learn your type tart type charts kids anyway uh, i'm gonna go out into nacho right here even though i know i can't touch him basically my uh, goal right here is to do as much damage as possible um because if i can come in and set up a sub that would be beautiful he ends up just scalding and i think the play to make would have been just sd to infinity and beyond with this thing um until like i've i until he killed me and then gone and set up a sub with Gyarados or just straight dragon danced either one of them um, as this part of the battle gets a little slow so I'm gonna talk about a little a little something else um, right now but let's see what was the thing I was gonna talk about this could potentially get bad oh also he reveals the icy wind right here which is actually a really cool mechanism for like stopping Gyarados from setting up right right in your face except if they have sub so you know uh, I'm just gonna fire off another high jump kick. I actually haven't missed yet, which is cool He's just gonna continue recovering which is his best play at this point and uh, Honestly, this is kind of looking like a snack wrap for him because uh, he's He's only up f uh, four to three at this point, I think um, And but he does have two mods that pretty much shut down my entire team despite the fact that um, I can potentially like, I, I can potentially break through his team with those two mods if I do get a little bit of luck on my side. But it's honestly a pretty slim chance of happening. But hey, you know, I've seen slimmer chances happen. Like, when I was using AV Entei the other day as my uh, Shandy check and I missed three straight stone edges, that was the day I decided to run HP Rock. Anyway, so he's going to go out into actually here. Uh, go ahead and take some Rock's damage, which is really nice. And I'm going to be able to sub right in his face. Um... So, you know, I, I guess, like, 
just hard switching out wasn't really the best play for me earlier. Like when I was talking about that play that I could have done and just SD to infinity, all that. But I'm going to get a free dragon dance right here, which is nice. So he's going to go for the drain punch on my sub, get a little bit of HP back. And um, right now I need two flinches to win. That's all I need, just two. It's, it's not like, it's kind of a lot, but it's not like crazy. I'm going to go for the waterfall right here. I'm yeah, I just need two. So I'm going to go for the waterfall right here, and I actually get the flinch. Um, so I'm going to go for the waterfall again, um, because if I do actually get this flinch, I win, just straight up. Um, but he, unfortunately, for me, breaks through. But, you know, I would have actually felt really bad about haxing him out like that had um, that situation come. And I can actually win again right here if I uh, flinch him with waterfall. Um, but, unfortunately again unfortunately but fortunately he breaks through the drain punch so you know he deserved to win that game um spoilers excadrill doesn't clean <laughs> um he deserved to win that game he definitely uh had some in-depth planning that i couldn't really beat to be honest um i'm just gonna go for the eq right here because you know it's my best play if i do get a crit on this and it's like oh i may have a chance um but unfortunately excadrill is pretty weak even adamant well of course this is a chestnut but anyway um, I do go ahead and drop another game. I believe I'm sitting at a 500 record again, as per the usual. So, um, you know, very good game, Merc. Uh, was a lot of fun playing against you, and I can only hope that I get another shot at you uh, when the playoffs come around. But that would, of course, be in the finals, so highly doubt I'm going to make it there. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy today's episode, please make sure to leave a like, as it really does help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video which is who do you think the uh mvp was for round six this was round six weeks 13 and 14 so go ahead and drop that in the comments below and with that i urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content and with that i'll catch you on the flip-flop